Hi folks, uh, welcome to Meditating with Isaiah. Now some of you who are watching this, I hope, won't be believers. I hope that you become believers. But there's this great invitation that comes here. Now we saw with meditating that you have to memorise. And we've memorised together, come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And this is the second part. And you who have no money, come by and eat. Come by wine and milk without money and without cost. So there's so much in this. We are told if we have none of this stuff, let's have a look. Cash, remember what cash was? That's great stuff. Uh, if you have a lot of cash, you feel pretty happy. You, can, you will have a card, you can have a, a card or a debit card or a credit card or whatever. And you can go, as I went into a shop just now, and I bought something. But how do you get an invitation when you have no money? Now, having no money is very much highlights a kind of an inability and a helplessness. And how can you buy without money? You don't have a shop saying, hey, come into this shop and buy without money. So it's a real issue in terms of what we're thinking of here because God is inviting us to come to him. And I think there's some very, very important lessons. Firstly, it's just simply this. We cannot buy, we just cannot buy God. We cannot buy salvation. We don't have enough. We, we just have nowhere have near enough resources. Somebody has to pay for it and we'll see what that is in a moment. The, the come by wine, this stuff here, and milk. I, I don't normally have wine in my office, but I just went out and got some. Come by wine and milk indicates that it's, it's the richness of the provision. It's not just waters. Come to the waters. But wine and milk, two different types of, of liquid. Without money and without price. Now, all of this is saying is something that is very, very, very important. Virtually every religion in the world, including many forms of Christianity, see religion as a means to placate God or to get right with God. But Christianity doesn't. It says you come and you come helpless as you are. You come, you don't have enough goodness or merit and you can't earn your salvation. But how do you come and buy? Because somebody's already bought it for you. It's like if someone gave me one of these cards and said, hey, there you are. There's a card for you. Um, this, you know, I'll give you this, this bank card. And I preloaded it. Well, we're being invited to come to Christ and he has paid the price for our sin. God's spiritual gifts are more valuable than rubies and gold. They cannot be earned by man's best works because all our best works are compromised when we, we seek to bring them to God. They have no purchasing power. That's why religion is so useless. And that's why this verse is telling us of free grace. 1 Corinthians 6.20, you were bought at a price, therefore honour God with your body. You were bought at a price, the price that Jesus paid for you know, says Peter, 1 Peter 1, 18, 19, that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. These two things here are symbolic of the riches, the spiritual riches that we can have. But these are riches that we cannot buy. But these are riches that we are to buy. And therefore they are riches that we can buy because Christ has already paid them for us. That's the, the great thing. We are to come and buy and eat. And we'll see tomorrow what more of that in, involves. But it's just such a wonderful lesson. And go ahead and memorize the whole verse. Come all you who are thirsty. Come to the waters. And you who have no money. 
Come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Because Jesus has paid it all. See you tomorrow. Bye. Peace.